Well, sorry for the postponed Wednesday walkabout. We're doing it on Thursday, but it's absolutely a glorious morning. We got so much wonderful, gentle rain yesterday. I swear everything grew three inches overnight and I absolutely love it. So in today's walkabout, we're gonna talk about lots of practical things. You're gonna to wanna to take some notes. We're gonna talk about some insecticides for a scale problem I have. We're gonna meet on the social patio at the table where I can share with you, um, oh, some some answers to some questions you have asked me regarding tulips and things. We are going to do a little bit of weeding. I have my hoary cory knife. I've got my cool jobs gloves and I think I'm ready to rock and roll. What about you guys? Let's do it. Let's do it. Now, a number of you have noticed something regarding the design on the side yard, and I wanna give you a little bit more information about it and my vision for the future, but also some things that I am, well, that's, let's just say I'm considering. So when you walk this way, some of you have pointed out or have asked, now that I've got it all landscaped beautifully along here, Am I going to extend that past the bench and all the way down to the gate? And the answer is maybe, or a little bit of modification, but not too much, because I really don't want that much more garden to have to take care of along here. And I want most of the emphasis to be at the front, but there are going to be some things that will grow, that will change over time, that will make this have a little bit more sense. Number one, so right here, I have a fabulous Oakland holly. Now I have another baby Oakland holly here that just isn't large yet. But over time, I anticipate that it too will get large. And when both of these are tall, I will encourage them to grow together and I will probably try to train them into some kind of arching form. So that way, just beyond the bench, there will be an arch that then takes you through the remainder of the path so to the so back. Yeah. Okay. So, so you can see how quickly this Oakland holly has grown here. Okay, and this one is, is smaller. But over time, this one will grow as well. I'm just gonna be patient. But even before they are both tall enough to grow up where I can create an arch by training them, a holly arch by training them to go into this last section, as I said, of the path to the back gate, this one will grow and I will have two sentinel hollies right here that will look as if they are a portal into something else. And there will be more visual weight right here. I just have to be patient and I am willing to be patient. Now, something else that will give this a little bit more completion is you may recall, speaking of Oakland hollies, I had Oakland hollies in both of these pots. Now, it got down to below zero last winter. These hadn't really gotten established in these pots. And perhaps more importantly, because they were over here where I never watered them, I never gave them any supplemental water, they succumbed to the cold. So what I think I'm going to do is a more practical solution. I will take these root balls out and I will just uh, drop in two more pots of Lamandra, which I think will be beautiful and will, from a design perspective, communicate with the Lamandra. Let's go this way, Stuart. With the Lamandra that you see, love that squeak, that you see as soon as you walk into the gate. So there will be Lamandra there, and then there will be Lamandra here. I will keep them in their pots probably, at least for a while, and then I will be able to just pluck them out and bring them in over the winter. So from this standpoint, Stuart, let's look at it in the reverse. Can you see how over time these two hollies will grow up Absolutely. And, cool and be a portal and then eventually I will try, may not work, but I will try to train them together. Visually, 
just having two of them right here will make it seem as if this is an entry into this section. And then, and then I really won't need to have anything over here other than that Lamondra in the pots because I don't want to add any more complexity to this than I have to. And because I don't want to extend the irrigation down here. Now something else I'm going to do is I had a beautiful uh, diamond spire gardenia here from Southern Living. It did not die, but it was just marginal in our 7B zone. It did not die. You can see, can you see all the new growth that's yeah, coming out? Candy, yeah. Okay, see the new growth is coming out right there. So it did not die, but what I probably am going to do, because there is an opportunity for this obviously to, to die back, what I will probably do is dig this up, put it in a container or something where it will be a little bit more protected or I will be able to give it some protection during the winter. And then I think I'll have another holly here that will then frame this. And yes, will I have to contain its growth? Yes, I will. Be careful, Stuart. Uh, will I have to contain its growth? Yes, I will. But remember, this is Oklahoma. This isn't Indiana or Tennessee where things just grow, you know, overnight. The rate of growth here is slower and I will, with minimal pruning, I will be able to control its height. So, height. So then, and by the way, that was, so many of you talked about that. Um, and it's a curious thing if you want to Google it, the, the uh, history of that. So I've got one here. Oh, didn't know. What are you talking about? oh, the pronunciation of height versus height. And I heard from some other people around the world who said they prefer height instead of height with an H on the end. So if you want to read a little bit about linguistic history, you can look that up. Um, but I digress. <laughs> so I've got a holly right here, and then I'll have another holly here, and I think it will seem to make more sense visually. Show them the second one. Where's the second okay, one? so there'd be another one here. Okay, thank you. Now, that's my question of the day. Does that make sense to you guys? <laughs> and do you think it will complete my vision and give more as I call it, visual weight to this section right here. That's my favorite question of the day. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? <laughs> I know. And sometimes it doesn't make sense <laughs> until we see if it works, because I'm always taking so many different risks. But this is a relatively conservative risk worth taking. Yeah. And it will give more evergreen oomph during the winter, because even if this doesn't die, I know that probably every winter, if it's a harsh one, it will die back. And so in that case, I don't want it to. And so I will get a holly here. And yes, I will contain its growth. So that was the design um, solution that I have, the design vision for the answer to your question, do I anticipate continuing the design down the east side? Now, the other thing here is that I want to point out that these terra hydrangeas, these terra oak leaf hydrangeas are doing beautifully. But look at how beautifully this ground cover is performing. So that will help keep moisture in without giving too much competition to the hydrangeas, even if it grows all the way back to the concrete. I'm not worried about that. And I can always divide the ajuga and put more of it in the back. So here is another punctuation point of the holly. So then there would be three in a row. Yes, over time, this snowball hydrangea, or excuse me, Chinese snowball viburnum will get too large, but I will keep pruning it up and under. So again, I will have this kind of arching It'll sensation. Yeah. So in my, in my imagination, there's kind of an arch here. This one complements of the viburnum, and over there it will be complements of the two holly, hopefully eventually meeting overhead. Now this is the potential for those two small terra hydrangeas. Look at how large this one has gotten. We're busy over here. Oh, you're busy over here? We Look are. Here. Me yeah, and the yes, Stuart's, Stuart's, <laughs> you and the audience are Me busy audience. looking at the hydrangea on its last leg. <laughs> or, I keep calling it hydrangea. <laughs> viburnum, excuse me. These are the hydrangeas. <laughs> it's my, it's These are the hydrangeas. Look at those huge buds. Oh, wow. Look at the leaves, too. They're yes. 
So this is this is how spectacular these terra hydrangeas will be. These are the ones that just dry so so beautifully, and then this whole section, wow! It just to me looked like it it just grew exponentially overnight after the rain. So these moon dance hydrangeas with these arborvitas in the back, these have just done incredibly, and then the white encore azaleas in the front. Once they pump out some blooms, they, they had something of a setback when it got so cold so late. But nevertheless, what that means is then I'll, I will still have blooms just a little bit later rather than sooner. After they bloom, if some of these outliers that are breaking the profile of the plants themselves, I can let them grow up and be at different heights or I can prune it back after it blooms so that it keeps the profile. It's a pretty uh, color. It is, it's, yes, it's beautiful. Okay, now this is very exciting. So, I think I told you about the value of pinching. And I've been pinching this taiga clematis a lot over time and I have been rewarded by that pinching and when I say pinching let me I guess show you what I mean if you will not judge me for my manicure I'm getting one today you can tell I've been working out in the garden okay so I'm gonna sacrifice a bud for you guys okay so you can see here see where I pinched this one and then by pinching that one in fact I'm gonna remove there we go I liberated it Okay, because this is two different. Oh, see? see? Okay, so on this one, I pinched it out in the middle right there and see how it put out two stems on either side. Perfect. The same thing happened here. This one is just mo more mature. I pinched it out here and two came out here. So cool. Now I can continue pinching. I can then pinch this one even by sacrificing that bud, I can pinch that one. What it does is for every one I pinch, it creates two stems. And why do I want to do that? I want to do that because that gives me more buds. And look at how many buds I have. This is just not even a year old. And look at all, see this is another case where I pinched it out and now I have two stems with buds. So I've got all these thick buds that are going to be crawling up through this evergreen. There are some crawling over here and it will be magnificent with this backdrop of the evergreen and, and I imagine it'll put on some blooms later with the white hydrangeas. So what does that look like when it blooms? Well, walk this way. And this is what it looks like. Oh, wow. Now over there I planted two. Over here I just planted one. Put but it, I've been pinching this shade. one as well. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, put it all, shade. All, shade. all shade. There we go. Really Isn't that gorgeous? Look at those two. That's my, some of my favorite color combinations. Yes. Purple and green. Yeah. And so then there's these buds down here. So I will just keep pinching this over time. You can see where I pinched this one. This is your lesson in pinching clematis. And, and each year it will just get fuller and fuller. And now I'm also extremely excited because this rose that I planted here has buds on it now. It's got two buds. And this will continue to grow and hopefully eventually especially after that rain yesterday, I will be able to train it up and over this door. So progress has been made. You know, there's that expression, first year it sleeps, second year it creeps, third year it leaps. Well, all of this is kind of, it's, some of it is starting to leap even before it creeps. So, and look at, look at, look at this just beautiful lemon lime Nandina. Talk about a great, the great use of a shrub as a ground cover. That's just beautiful and it looks beautiful with the purple. Okay, that was kind of a long winded little walk down the side, side garden. So let's take a break here, Stuart, and we'll come back. 
So one of my design dilemmas was that I kept telling you that I wanted more height and more visual weight on this side. And I'm not sure when you saw this area last from a broad perspective, but here are some solutions that I came up with, um, some changes that I made to do just that and get a little bit more prominence on this side. So Stuart's gonna walk around that way and I'm gonna come over here to point out one of the changes that I made to give both some height and visual weight to this side. So one thing I did a couple of weeks ago, and look how, look how beautiful this area looks when it's backlit by the morning sun. So one thing I did a while ago you probably wouldn't even noticed, but it made a significant difference. This boxwood that I put here used to be on the west side, and I'll show you later where. It used to be on the west side, but this one was much larger. So I moved this one from over there, and I took the small one that was here, and I planted it over there. Now, I wouldn't be doing these things if it were the dead of summer, but boy, I've got the luxury of doing it now in the springtime when temperatures are cool and we're getting abundant rain. So I moved a large boxwood over here and immediately it gave more prominence, not just during the growing season, but also during uh, the winter time. I'll have a lot more evergreen presence here. The other thing that I did in my, uh, you know, continuing practice of stealing from Peter to pay Paul is this pot here used to be on the brick edge over there on the edge of the upper terrace, right behind that finial. So with great difficulty, the guys moved it over here and now I have one more of these Eugenia topiaries. This was planted into the concrete pot in its plastic pot. That way, when it's time to go to the greenhouse, we will just lift it out. That did not deter me from underplanting it with some pure joy sedum and some vervain, which by the way, here is another, here is another pinching tip. I am take one second, <laughs> pinching the vervain, just don't trip. I'm pinching the vervain because I want it to be fuller too. So I'm pinching that out in the middle. I'm pinching this one out in the middle. I'm pinching this one out. And best to start this pinching practice early because <laughs> I want the density and the bushiness to be lower. If I waited till this got out to here and then I pinched it back, there'd be all this bushiness at the edge. I want the bushiness to be, ooh, that sounds like a lawnmower, lawnmower gone awry. I thought so you I'm, meant start pinching early in life. That's so, what well, saying. yeah, that's it. <laughs> Penny pinching early in life. So you can save money for your garden. Okay, so I'm pinching this. One thing I observed after I moved it to do this new location was that it had some scale on it. And that is not uncommon in greenhouse plants or even outdoors, but it is something you want to address. And I have already sprayed it and sloughed off some of it. But look there, see those little white nodules? Right behind my finger? Oh, okay. What? Oh, my side can't. oh, okay, I see it now. Yes, they see it. I thought we were looking at the leaves. Okay. Though. So that I'm going to slough off as much as I can with my fingers, but I also sprayed it with some neem oil. And this is Captain Jack's neem oil. It occurs naturally, naturally in nature. That's a little bit redundant, but nevertheless, <laughs> we will put a link to this below. And then I added just a little bit of, of Castile natural soap to a pump sprayer. And I've used most of it, you can tell. I think I got this at the dollar store, but you can get one of these hand pressurized pump sprayers. Again, we'll put a link below 
You can find these practically everywhere. And I just mixed a solution of this and I sprayed this one. And I also sprayed my olive trees in the back, which were showing some signs of scale. And I will do this repeatedly according to the package directions. Add a little bit of soap to this so that it serves as a surfactant so it will really stay on the plant itself and do its job. Plus, that soap will serve a little bit as an insecticidal deterrent, insecticidal soap to deter pests. So, after I did this one and I sprayed this one, I went and I checked all of my remaining Eugenia to see if any of them were likewise infected. And I have not seen any of it appear on the other ones. But again, on my daily walkabouts, I will come and I will check each one of those to see if this pest has spread. Likewise, I will look at anything that's planted around it to make sure that it does not spread there. So there is a great tip for you and a way that you can try to control scale or other pests on your greenhouse now in the garden plants. Let's take a break here and I'll show you some more stuff. Okay, here's another planting design tip in this kind of liminal season. We're in between seasons. The tulips are pretty much all out. I've been pulling them out. The pansies don't have that much longer, but they're still looking pretty good. Yet I want to get in the replacement color and get it established before it gets hot because I think we've got already on the horizon an 87 degree day next week. <laughs> so how am, I, how am I dealing with that uh, overlap of seasons? Well, what I'm doing is I am leaving whatever pansies and violas still look good but I am selectively pulling out some bunches that may not look great. And in their place, I am planting the future seasonal color. So here is some more of that vervain, which will bloom in violet, and I'm pinching it out here. I planted some back here. I can pinch this. This could be an episode people do something every time you pinch. Yes, every t yes. <laughs> Take a shot. Take a swig every time I pinch. <laughs> so I'll pinch this. Then you'll notice that the ajuga will stay in here, but I planted some more of this dusty miller, which I will not have to replant next year. But I am likewise pinching it because it really benefits from pinching. That's something I discovered last year. So instead of going vertical, it will grow bushier. And that not only is a good growth habit tip, but also it's a money saving tip because the more you pinch, the fewer plants you have to plant to get the same effect. Let the plants do the work, not you. Now you may have also noticed another new ingredient inside the window box and that is when in doubt plant a sunshine ligustrum it's tough it can really handle the heat and as importantly from a design perspective it's giving me that jolt of yellow that i like in addition to a little bit of privacy from inside now what i will do over time is i will clip off or pull off some of the undergrowth right here. Can you see that? Get a little closer. There you go. Okay, see how I'm exposing some of the trunk of the plant? I am limbing this up. And why am I doing that? I am doing this because I want to be able to grow things underneath it to cascade over the side. So I am willing, I need to get my pruners here. or some scissors or whatever is close at hand, I am willing to sacrifice some of these lower branches. Plus, because I'm a control freak, you guys know how, how that makes Stuart giggle, you know how I like to limb things up. And so, so good. and it does, it really gives definition. It's like making it's a bed, kinda. Yeah, it's immediate, <laughs> it's immediate gratification. So nice. But in this case, it's got a double benefit of 
giving me space for things to cascade over the side and also getting a little bit more air circulation down in here and more light to the things that will be growing underneath it. And then I will finish I've got the vervain in. I will add more Dusty Miller over time. Let me show you how I pinch this back or cut it back. And there's really not any specific place you have to do this, but in the center, I just clip out that center portion. Try one more time. I think it's try it one more time. Okay. Let's try this one right here. Your top panel okay. Back. Can you see that? Yes, I think so. Spot right there. Okay. I'm just going to clip the center one. The center one. And then I will add more Dusty Miller to the west end of the box uh, and eventually we still haven't, even though I don't think we'll have a freeze, a lot of times I have to wait just because the nurseries still aren't carrying a lot of the annuals that I want, but I will finish this design by adding more light pink, maybe pentas, some scaviola, some of the same, maybe some um, lantana, those same things in the color palette of pink, yellow, blue, and white that I will again have this year, and all of that will come cascading out. But fortunately, it will have a head start because even while the, the violas and the pansies, which likes, like the cool temps, are still in bloom, I am planting what is to come. So let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, I hope you guys are using your garden journal. And I've got mine out here because I'm recording a bunch of things. One of them being the scale that I just noticed on my Eugenia topiaries. But I also pulled out my color blends tulip order from last year, which I keep in my garden journal, and I hope you do too, to answer one of your questions. And that is, what were the tulips in the back blooming and those were El Nino yellow and orange with rose and red they were tall uh, and if you go to well, let me see I'm looking if you, in case you want the number the item number was 1701 but on colorblends.com you can go and you can find that I am going to place my tulip order this week because I know exactly what I want to do next year based on the successes and maybe some of the misses from this year. The other one that you asked about was a lot of the double reddish golden orangey kind of tulips that bloomed at the very end. They were late tulips and that was Morris Goodenough. And we will put links to both of these uh, both of these in the description box below, but just go to colorblends.com and if you like, here's another question of the day, if you like, would you, do you want me to share what I'm going to be ordering next year? As a general rule, next year I am not going to be ordering any early blooming tulips. They're all going to be mid to late tulips and yes, I will record them in my garden journal. Now I have to tell you something funny. So I got an email last night from my publisher saying that she had been contacted by Apple Plus TV to see if they could use my garden journal as a prop in an upcoming TV series about arsonists. I'm not sure what the, the relationship <laughs> is, other than they're probably trying to do some kind of character development or something, trying to intimate that the person is a gardener. <laughs> Anyhow, that's fun. Uh, the Garden Journal, I think, is going to be in a TV series called Firebird. And Bug. Firebug? Firebug. Firebug. And, and what's the one that was on prior to this that they made? My kids knew. I did not. But anyhow, that's kind of a fun little tidbit. And also, please know, oh, and the Garden Journal is on sale right now on Amazon for like, what is it? For $20. So uh, we will put the link below, but definitely you want to, to grab a copy of yours. Mine has been indispensable to me. And also the beautiful box set. Here's my little commercial, the beautiful box set of the elegant of and edible garden. It is beautiful. Really if I cool. do, if I do <laughs> say so funny. myself, it really is beautiful. This is also available Love now. That. Yeah. <laughs>
is also available now. So there you go. There are some, uh, oh, just, just little fun points in the course of a day going on here at the cottage, and we'll be right back. Okay, another answer to a question. This heretofore had been in the back. This is a beautiful concrete planter and I have planted it with some creeping English thyme. A lot of you had asked me, okay, what is it that's growing in here? And here's how I contain it and keeping it looking its best. And that is, I just take some scissors. Give it a little haircut. It, yes, I give it a little haircut, clipping it to the profile of the pot. That thickens it up gives me, this is a culinary time, it's not all culinary, uh, but also gives me some clippings to take inside because what I want is just this beautiful carpet of green, a little lawn, a little thyme lawn in a pot. This is one of my favorite things to do. And, and what I love about this is it gives me the look Notice how I'm pruning this kind of on a contour so it will have a rounded edge. Um, it it kind of gives me the look of moss that I can grow in the spring, but I can't grow in the summer because it just seems to get too hot. But it gives me the same effect of kind of a, a lush little lawn in a pot. Now the other thing that I want to give tremendous thanks to someone and if you are the person who told me about this thank you thank you as you guys know i've talked ad nauseum over the fact that i get terrible leg cramps at night foot cramps muscle spasms in general i have indeed been drinking more water taking my magnesium drinking pickle juice um, mustard i have been taking all of those steps i've been stretching my calves before i went to bed but the other night i still had a really bad episode so enter theraworks Thank you, thank you. Somebody recommended this. Now, hopefully it wasn't just a, a one-shot deal, but I used it last night and for the first time in a long time, I did not wake up at all in the middle of the night with any kind of Charlie horses, foot so cramps, <laughs> agony, have to get up and walk around. So I will put a link to this below, but thank you, thank you. Whoever told me about this, I definitely think it did help. And in fact, I'm, I rubbed some on my husband's pinched nerve today, thinking maybe he's got muscle spasms in conjunction to the pinched nerve. So there you go. I think this stuff is great. And I wanted to share it with you because you shared it with me. Now let's go on. I want to show you something else. Well, if you're like a lot of the passersby that I've had recently, and boy, have there been a lot of garden visitors right after right after the eclipse there were i don't know how many people that stopped in oklahoma city on their way back home to boston chicago taos those were just some of the places where people were visiting from and came by the cottage and signed my guest book so thank you all of you guys um, but a lot of the other strollers have been asking me now that the tulips are done sadly what comes next well, basically what comes next is going to be lots of lavenders, purples, whites, fuchsia, a little bit of yellow, grays, and here's an example of that. So this beautiful mound of Dusty Miller is an example of, you pl I planted one little four inch pot last year and look what it did simply by continually pinching it back. It thickened up that much and gives the appearance almost of a small shrub. So that's what, that's the magic of pinching back. So you want to do it often and regularly. And so I continue to pinch that back. Lots of the foxglove are starting to come up. I continue to do weeding every day. Stuart's mom was asking me, Okay, how do I keep weeds at bay? Because every time I'm out here, I am probably picking a weed. And it's easy work after the rain. It's kind of like consistency. Is just it's consistency. A little bit daily prevents a lot of, of marathon sessions down the line. Okay, the other thing that I was remiss, apparently I did not tell you what it was, but a number of you asked what was the purple plant when we were at Bricks that I did not share with you. And it's a salvia gregii, and this one is 
Salvia Mirage Deep Purple. And it's going to bloom in this beautiful deep purple. I love this combo in front of not only this lavender pincushion flower or scabiosa, but also I have little lavender and little grape buddleii from the Butterfly Candy series blooming, will eventually bloom back here. And then growing up amongst them are my blueberries. Takes the cake and they're oh, already, is, yeah, huh? looky here, looky on the end. I'm starting to see little baby blueberries form. So that's very exciting. So I anticipate that these will grow large, almost the size of a shrub. I will cut them back regularly to prevent woodiness because that sometimes can be a problem with salvia gregii. Not so much cut them back as just, I guess, cut out old woods. The other thing that I am on my walkabouts really paying attention to um, are any little seedlings that are coming up around this particular salvia, and I'm not sure exactly what that beautiful fuchsia color is, but it's wonderful, and I am planting more of it up around the social patio. And in another video, I will show you that a little bit later. The other thing that I am doing as I switch out plants in anticipation of late spring and summer bloom is something that I am calling since I just since I just did my taxes and am looking at all things financial right now. I decided that not only do I need to rebalance my investment portfolio, but I need to rebalance my garden portfolio. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that in areas that I have too much concentration, I am relocating some of those plants to reduce density and moving it into another area where I think I will get a better return on my investment. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's just take a break here. And when we come back, I'll wrap things up and I'll show you what I mean. Here's a quick tip for you that you especially want to pay attention to on your walkabouts in your own garden after a rain. Is there standing water in any of your pots? And this one had a lot of standing water in it. And I know that before too long, this boxwood would succumb to being too waterlogged, as would everything else planted in here. So I just turned it on its side. Look at how much water came out. A lot of it has already soaked in to the gravel, but it's just a mush in here. So that tells me that I either need to replant this or I need to unclog the drainage hole. The other thing that I'm noticing is that there's all sorts of roly polies that have moved in because of this oversaturation. So when you are walking about in your garden, make sure that all of your pots have adequate drainage and that none of your plantings are waterlogged and need to be cleaned out. Well, not only have lots of, of human garden visitors come by the cottage, but now all of my old friends, all of my insect wildlife are starting to return as well. So I've seen all sorts of butterflies and bees and little humming things. They especially like that scabiosa, um, that pincushion flower. They really, really love that. But let me go back to my analogy of redistributing, rebalancing my gardening portfolio. And that is, I love this East Friesland salvia. I've shown it to you a number of different times. It grows beautifully. I keep deadheading it and it will bloom from now into full first frost if I deadhead it. However, it was blooming so profusely and I had it planted so densely that I realized I had too much invested in this area. So what I did was I dug some of it up and I transplanted it onto these berms around the railings. And what that does is it then gives the garden visitor an idea of 
of continuity and harmony and integration with the rest of the garden. So I planted, transplanted some here and I transplanted some there. And you can't, it's not even drooping. It's not complaining at all. And that's because we did it right before this wonderful rain and we tried to get as much of the root ball as we possibly could when we replanted it. Now the other thing that it did is not only inject this area then with much needed color, and I won't have to plant as much annual color here, but it also gave room for some of the other colors that are up here on the upper, ter upper terrace to really express themselves. You'll be able to see the white Minoan lace then when it comes into bloom so much more beautifully than you could before when this area was more dense. It will get more light, it will grow taller, and the entire effect of this design vignette will be far superior to what it would have been had I not removed two of these. Likewise, I removed one of these balls of sunshine ligustrum to the west side and it really made this whole area seem not quite so overgrown. Now last year I was okay with that because I wanted instant maturity. But now as a money saving tip and to a, a beautification tip, I have thinned this out and reinvested my garden portfolio into other asset areas. I also really want to point out to you guys because I am get, I'm getting ready to close this out. But look at how beautifully Autumn's Edge is starting to mature. This orange rocket, I love this trio. I love me some orange rocket barberry, this kaleidoscope abelia, and the fire chief arborvita. And I've got one here that I clipped back. I kind of now wish I hadn't been such a fast gun with my clippers. But this one I think I'm going to relocate someplace else where it is needed more because this area has matured around it and it's not necessary. And here, lastly, are two different effects you can get with Kaleidoscope Abelia. This one I have allowed to grow taller and I still have a little bit of clipping on some of this woody growth. But I've allowed this one to be more statuesque and taller, whereas these down here, right along the brick wall, I have cut those lower almost as a ground cover. So even in some plants, you can get two different effects depending on how much you allow them to mature or if you're a control freak like myself and sometimes you like to prune things back harshly. So uh, there you go. Uh, a walkabout of what has been, what is to come, and how my vision for this garden is expressing itself. Thank you guys for hanging out with me on this Wednesday walkabout that we did on Thursday, and I will see you this weekend. Take care.